what is up guys welcome to the cloud zone yep that's what we're calling ourselves now and we're gonna run with it so today we're gonna be talking about something that everybody loves to talk about and that is money 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 just from my short stint on YouTube so far, I've seen a lot of comments and videos around uh, salaries for tech roles and particularly in the cloud. And there seems to be quite a bit of demand around these type of videos. And I think that's great, actually. Um, there's a little bit of a stigma around talking about how much you earn or even talking about, say, wanting a role for the salary that it, it provides. It's a very important part of the reason why we work and do the jobs that we do. Uh, so that we can put money on the table. So yeah, today we're going to run through some of the salaries that you can net in certain positions across different uh, cloud providers. And if you stick around towards the end, I will run through my own personal salary growth uh, across the roles, both as a strictly software engineer and then moving into the cloud space, what the differences between those two salaries were and the differences between the roles that I was looking at when I was going to apply and why I end up going down the cloud architect route, say, instead of like a solution architect or something like that. Before that though, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the cloud and tech space, or even talking about personal finances and the salaries you can expect in these roles, make sure you hit that like and subscribe because one of the first subscribers in the first 1000 subscribers will be getting a $100 Amazon gift voucher. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. So cloud computing. Being a very close cousin to software engineering, we share a lot of the same roles with uh, the generic software engineering roles. So things like uh, cloud engineer would be closest to a software engineer or a programmer. And then you've also got things like solution architects, which could be similar to a system design architect. Um, or even like technical project managers, you then have the same thing essentially being like a product, a product manager or a technical project manager uh, within the software engineering space. Uh, and then not only do we have a lot of similar roles, but similar to software engineering, we also have a wide variety of roles that describe the exact same thing. So today, keeping that in mind, we're going to focus on some of the most popular roles and titles that sort of encompasses the most number of sub subfields or sub roles uh, and are the most distinct between each other. So we can get a good grasp of what these different sort of fields and areas of work within cloud, uh, what their salaries are and uh, what sort of growth potential there is within these, within these roles. So with that said, let's jump into some of those roles. So the roles and salaries I'm gonna run you through today uh, are in the fields of solution architects technical program managers, cloud support engineers, and then generally cloud engineers. Then at the very end, when we're talking about my own uh, career progression and salary growth, we'll talk more about the cloud architect role, which is sort of a hybrid between a cloud engineer and a solution architect. Roles may have slightly different titles or requirements depending on what vendor or company you're working for, but more generally, we're going to talk about the entry level uh, roles and what their salaries and benefits look like across all of these different fields so that you can get a good feel for uh, what the benefits are between vendors across roles and what the, what the benefits are across you know, just ro different role types, regardless of what vendor you work for. Even we're going to be talking about the entry level for all of these different roles, uh, things like benefits around stocks and stuff aren't going to change that much depending on what vendor you're using. Uh, primarily because those heavy stock compensations come in at the higher levels. Whereas as an L4, you might get a nice like signing bonus or a nice, uh, you know, a stock grant, depending on where you join. Uh, obviously, this is going to vary largely depending on where what location you're working at as well. So if you're working in the Bay, it might be uh, your stock your stock and compensation structure might be quite different to someone who's say working in Europe or someone who's working in Australia like me. So the salaries we'll be looking at are aggregates from places like levels.fii and payscale.com. And because of that, they're going to be slightly skewed by the salaries you can net working in like the Bay or certain areas in America. But in general, I think they're a good price guide for what you can expect to earn. Um, across the entire sector. Um, it may be a little bit off depending on where you're located at and what the average salaries are in your particular area, 
But I've noticed within Australia, uh, when you account for uh, the, the current conversion rate, it works out pretty similar to what's listed there. Even with a bad conversion rate, it works out pretty similar to what, uh, what is listed on the US sites. So starting off with Solution Architects. As a Solution Architect at working at Azure, you can expect to be pulling in about $102,000 USD per year. As you can see above me, here's a breakdown between base pay, stocks, and bonuses like sign-on bonuses. If you were then looking at AWS, you'd be looking to earn somewhere about 150K USD, give or take a little bit. And then moving towards the highest is Google Cloud Platform, actually. You're looking to bring in around about 180,000 at that L4 level. So as you can see between the different vendors, even just from out of the gate, there is quite a bit, of, there's quite a discrepancy between how much you can earn at each particular major cloud provider. So this is something that you have to take into account. It's also something that you have to understand uh, as a part of the whole role itself. So the work that you do at Google Cloud Platform might be slightly different to the work you do at AWS and the different type of contracts that you be, uh, that you be. There's a lot of different projects and contracts that you would undertake working for a vendor like Google in comparison to AWS and Azure. And that can vary depending on location as well as based on vendor. So for instance, with AWS here, there is a large uh, government sector in Brisbane, uh, which is the location which I work. Um, whereas if you were to go to Sydney, another state in Australia, uh, AWS has a lot of commercial contracts as well. So you sort of have to balance it out with, okay, so here's the salary between the vendors, but based on my location itself, here's the type of work that I'd be doing. But out of the gate, you can see these vendors are paying a lot of money for these entry level roles. And uh, these do sort of line up with how software engineering roles pay out in general across that, that FANG group. You can also see with the Solution Architect that the base pay between AWS and Google Cloud actually isn't that different. Google does tend to pay uh, quite a bit more stock. In particular, AWS's vesting schedule might be playing into that figure quite a bit because AWS tends to be very back heavy with their, uh, with their RSU vesting schedule. So that could also be playing into how that works out in general. So let's talk about cloud engineering roles now. So working at Azure, you can expect to earn about 149 to 150 ish thousand total compensation. And you can see there is quite a heavy stock element there with not a lot of sign on bonus. And then jumping over to AWS, you can see there is a bit of a jump here from 149 ish to about 170. And a lot of that difference is being made up in the total cash pay. So AWS in this instance is paying quite a bit more cash. And then coming in at the highest again, we have the Google Cloud Platform role, which is coming in at about 185K, which is a pretty decent jump up from AWS again. But actually in this case, the sign-on bonuses in it and external bonuses are lower than AWS, but they're making headway in the base pay and total stock grants. So you can see there is quite a big difference between that Azure role and then that uh, Google Cloud Platform role in the cloud engineering. Then when we jump into the technical program managers, this is like more of your program and product management type role. Starting off with Azure, we're coming in at about 133K USD with the majority of that coming from your, your base cash pay. And then we jump over to AWS, in which we're looking at about 149,000 USD. So another jump up again, which is primarily in your base pay with quite a bit more stock grants and sign-on bonuses. Then finally finishing off with Google Cloud Platform, you're looking at about 180,000 USD total compensation with a lot of that being stocks and sign-on bonuses. So now that we've run through in general the total salary compensations you can get for a number of different roles in the cloud, uh, we should probably talk about growth opportunities and how your salary can progress working at one of these major cloud providers. Something that I have found that's quite good about working at like a FANG or a large tech company uh, that's different from working at a smaller, say a startup or a, even a, just a regular you know, brick and mortar or a Fortune 500 company is that in some of these smaller companies, the uh, pay scales and the way in which you get promoted and move up through the company can be a little bit ambiguous and also based on who you know and how well you do the whole corporate politics thing. 
And while there is definitely an element of that working at these companies, um, I think something to keep in mind is that the the, the ladders and the, the way that things are set out and the way that you can be promoted and move through the ranks is a lot more clear and communicated quite openly when you come and work for these companies. So if you're a sort of person who's quite ambitious and likes to have clear goals to move up to the next levels and those sort of things, working at some of these big tech companies and definitely from my experience working at AWS, I found that that is uh, front and center from all of your talks around performances and uh, all the inbuilt uh, metrics and systems around KPIs and how you're progressing towards the next level in your particular role. Uh, it's very well set out and that's something that I personally find to be very rewarding and uh, enables me in my career in salary growth. And generally the way the promotions work uh, at these sort of companies is that you'll have a role guidance doc. So if you start say as an L4, you'll get this role guidance doc and it'll lay out all the responsibilities that you'll have at your particular role. And then there'll be a bunch of different responsibilities for say like an L5 engineer or an L6 engineer. And then in order to actually be promoted to the next level, you have to be operating at that L5 level or the role guidance uh, around what your responsibilities are in L5 in order to showcase that you're ready to be up leveled to the next uh, to the next level in your progression. Which was great for me being able to sort of track how I'm progressing against particular like fields and responsibilities within my role and really helps me to become self-motivated towards pushing towards that next promotion. If that's something that appeals to you, working for some of these big cloud providers can be a great benefit in that in that sense. So to put all of those salaries into context, I thought I'd talk a little bit about my own career and how my salaries progress from you know graduating, coming into my first role, um, working at some internships as well, sort of like what the pro what the salaries were like there, and what level of responsibilities were, and now to where I am at now working at AWS as a cloud architect. Obviously, I mean, over time in any role, your salary is going to change as you get more experienced. And that's something that I've definitely been able to see great jumps in whilst I've been working, even over my short, uh, short career tenure already. So actually, while I was studying, I was able to undergo an internship, which is paid over here in Australia, working for Deloitte in their digital arm, working primarily as a AWS expert, I guess. Although it was titled something quite ambiguous, like cloud and transformation consultant, uh, I wasn't actually very sure what I was going to be doing when I came in there, but it seemed like a good opportunity to get upskilled and get my feet wet in the actual tech environment, understand what it was I was going to be doing after I graduated. So while I was working there, I was earning around about 56,000 AUD, which is roughly about 35,000 USD, which seems quite low, but I mean, Given that I was actually getting paid, unlike the US, uh, I felt like it was a bit of a win. So I worked there for about two or three months, getting my experience as an AWS, essentially doing the exact same thing that I was doing now as a cloud architect, although I didn't know it at the time. So then I finished that and then I went back to studying full time. And then towards the end of my degree, I managed to land a part time role working at a cryptocurrency exchange. So while I was there, I was working as a junior engineer. Um, as a, It was supposed to be as an embedded SRE on the team. And it kind of just ended up being more of a back-end engineering role, which was actually quite good. I enjoyed the work that I was doing there. It was technically challenging. And it was also 75,000 AUD, which was a big jump up from uh, where I was working at Deloitte, around that 56, 60 mark. Uh, so no, I was very excited, uh, came with a bunch of stock grants, which I can't remember the value of now. Who knows if they're even worth anything after the crypto winter. So I worked there for about six months and on that pay salary, I was looking to maybe get promoted in about a year, a year and a half. It's, it's hard to tell with those smaller companies. You don't really know what KPIs you need to hit in order to you know, move up to that next level or if it's just based on tenure. So then eventually while I was working there, I got poached by AWS. A recruiter reached out to me and said, hey, are you interested in doing this tech you program? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Like I, I tried to apply to Amazon multiple times when I was going through university and got rejected. But it turns out just getting a little bit of experience working in the actual fields of you know uh, cloud in general um, made me a lot more hireable and a lot more approachable by the company to the point where I was actually poached instead of having to apply for the role. 
So when I was initially signed with AWS, the base pay was around about 94, 96 thousand Australian dollars. And then on top of that, I was paid a sign on bonus of 27,000 for the first year and then 24,000 in the second year. Uh, with an additional total of $100,000 in stock grants to be vested over four years. So I think in general, my TC uh, for the first year is around about 130 to 140,000 Australian, which works out to be about just under 100,000 USD. So I think in general, across, across Australia, that is that's quite good for a first, like sort of just out of university role. Um, and the reason why the USD equivalent is quite low is because of the purchasing power of the Australian dollar to the US dollar right now is quite bad. So that's why it's working out quite a bit lower. But that said, 135,000 in Australia is a lot and enough to live quite comfortably over here. So as you can see, from when I graduated working that internship to moving into my first role and then being hired by AWS, there was quite a number of salary jumps as I moved through. And I think that's what you'll find in general uh, for your first couple roles is that don't expect to get paid a lot unless you can be one of these miracle prodigies that get hired by AWS straight in university or out just out of university. Expect that your salary will jump quite a bit as you move up through the ranks and across vendors towards your dream position. So all I'm trying to say is don't be disheartened if you see these large these large figures and they're not exactly what you're getting paid right now or they're not to the level of the roles in which you uh, find yourself qualifying for as you come straight out of university. You can eventually find your way into roles that you were blocked from like me. I mean, I applied for Amazon three times and was rejected at the loop stage in all of those times. I think I'd done somewhere around about 15 to 16 hours of interviews with Amazon, which at the time was very disheartening. But then, you know, life just, life happens, you get experience and you I found myself here where I wanted to be and I'm sure the same will be, I'm sure the same will happen for you. So in conclusion, uh, I'm fairly happy with where I ended up. There was a lot of twists and turns that I took to get to where I am now. And through this channel, I hope that I can continue to talk about these sort of things like salary and career progression, and perhaps even exploring some of the more niche or uh, not talked about parts of the industry and foster a community in which we can all sort of help each other and understand like these really interesting and dynamic times which we live in in the tech space. When I was going through university, I didn't even know what cloud was or how all of these roles sort of played into it. So I'm hoping that this channel and the videos that I make can help somebody along that same path that I was on uh, make their way into the industry with a little bit more understanding and knowledge than I had and sort of had to just painfully figure out as I moved through. And on that note, I love talking about finances and salary. I think the same part of me that makes me uh, a big nerd programmer, it makes me also a big finance nerd that loves to look at Excel sheets and you know pay calculators, tax summaries. All this stuff is amazingly fascinating to me, even though it sounds boring just even talking about it like tax. Ugh. <laughs> so if you want to see more videos like this talking about salary or even exploring some of the more niche parts of the market, like I am really fascinated with these like prompt engineering and AI generated type roles that are spinning up with these ridiculous figures of salaries. So if you want to see more interesting information about that, uh, feel free to leave a like and comment or even subscribe if you haven't. Maybe the first 1000 subscribers, someone's getting a $100 Amazon gift voucher. That could be you. So yeah, that about wraps us up. I hope this video has helped you out uh, in your journey into the cloud and tech space and opened your eyes to perhaps some roles that you hadn't even considered. And yeah, see you until the next video, guys. See you later.